Okay, so now that we have the basics of our for loops down, we're going to get into some more practical use stuff. But in order to be able to fully utilize for loops, we're going to have to add some additional layers of knowledge. And one of the things that we're going to need in that regard are uh, string functions. Now we've discussed before that uh, strings are objects, and in Python they also have operations and functions built into them because they're objects. So we're going to go over the list of the basic ones and uh, most of the ones that we're going to use in the Python part of this course. First one is the len function. And so if I had a word, and let's just make a variable for it, and uh, my word is comp psi, uh, I could use the len function to print the length of it. And basically the len function uh, just returns the length of whatever word you put in its parameters. So I would do something like len, if I wanted to find the length of comp psi, I would just say len word. So uh, function name uh, with the variable name as a parameter. Uh, and then I could print that, obviously. And it would give me the number of letters or characters that are in comp psi. So if I hit F6... And the reason it's able to do that is because when you store the data into the word object, when you store this uh, comp sci data uh, into there, each of these characters gets put into an index uh, from zero to one less than the maximum number. So comp sci has seven characters, so these characters would be put into a, an index from zero to six. And you can see that len output seven. And that's pretty much all that len does. It's a little bit boring. Uh, the next one we can do is the index function. Now the index function is going to search for a character in the uh, string that you give it, and it will return the index number where that letter occurs. So if I were to look for the S in word, so let's go, I would, I would say, um, I would say index or word dot index and then I would look for the s and let's go ahead and print that and so what's going to happen here is that it's going to look for the s in word which is equal to comp sci so it's going to come at uh, search through comp sci and it's going to find it at zero one two three four and it should return uh, the number four when I print this out, which it does. So remember their index from zero to one less than the number of characters. So zero, one, two, three, four, and I've got my S. And so word.index S returns four. I could do uh, the C in comp sci, and that would return the value at zero because that occurs at zero, and I could return the i, which would be at six. And so those things are cool, and we need to know those, but they're kind of boring compared to the next thing. The next thing is slicing, and this one works pretty good because we can slice up strings any way that we want to, and it's a whole lot easier than using these weird functions that we don't know that much about. So let's go with, uh, a basic slice I could uh, take word and uh, all I have to do here is put up a set of square brackets and I can put a range so let's say I wanted to uh, grab the characters inside of word from 1 which is the O to 4 which is the S now again the top of the range uh, is going to be excluded here uh, because range tops are just excluded in most programming languages. So it should give me uh, index indices one through three, which is zero and P. So if I print this out, word from one to four, should give me O M P. So one, two, three, and then the four is excluded. And so the other thing I can do is I can just print, get one letter from there, and so if I just put the two in there and I ran that, it would give me the letter at position two, 
zero, one, two, which is M. So that's what gets printed out. So that's all well and good, but let's take everything that we've learned so far and put it all together and make it fun. So if I want to um, actually do something cool, I could take inputs for my word. So I could say word equals, and then I could say input. And please enter a word. And so then I can set up a for loop. And I'll just say for i in range. And then I'll do from zero to the length of whatever word that I put in. And you'll also need to remember that the top of your range is going to be exclusive, but this is going to end up being one more than the last index because remember that uh, your strings get, um, get indexed from zero to one less. So this will actually work out even for us. So in that range, I'm going to print, uh, let's go with word at the value i. So let's look at this carefully. I have, um, I have an i that keeps iterating forward and I'm printing out word at the index of i each time that keeps getting higher and higher. So basically what this should do is print out the first letter of my word that's at position zero and keep printing the letter of one, uh, of the letter that's at one index higher each time the loops run. So by the end, I've printed the entire word vertically. So let's just, without uh, further ado, let's go ahead and run that and we can actually see that how that practically works out. So I put in the word sausage. And then you can see it starts with the S, right? So from I in range, I'm starting at zero. I'm going all the way to the length of sausage. And every time the loop runs, I'm starting at uh, position zero. So I'm printing a uh, word at position zero, which is the S. Then it's going to add one and the loop's going to start over again. Then I'm going to print A. It's going to add one, which will print out uh, the letter at position two, which is going to be the U. And S and A and G, it does the same for all the letters until it reaches the end, which is length of the word. And as soon as I get past this E, uh, my I is now uh, greater than or equal to uh, the, len the len word, and then the loop exits. So I just use that uh, to print out something that's actually practically kind of cool. Uh, now I can do something even better than that, which is I could make a triangle out of my word. So let's use a function for this one. I could say print try, and I could say for i in range, and I'm going to say zero to length to the length of word. And this thing always gets in the way. So from zero to the length of the word, I'm going to print a word from zero to I. So I'm going to print a slice of word from zero to the current value of I uh, each time the loop runs. So I'm going to start with uh, one, or I'm going to start with uh, one space. So it's going to go from zero to zero, which means I'm going to print the first letter at position zero. Then I'm going to print two letters. Then I'm going to print three letters and so on and so forth, because this we're going to always start at zero. That stays constant. But this I is going to go up each time the loop runs until I get to the length of the word. So now all I have to do is run print triangle and it looks kind of uh, triangular when we get done. So if I print sausage and we have a little mishap here. Let's have the E uh, on the end of this, right? And you're probably saying to yourself, 
Dude, Robinette, I thought uh, this would work because the length of the word is one higher. And you're right, that is the case. However, we have another range here that's added, added in a difficult, an additional layer of uh, difficulty for us. And so this, the top of this is, is exclusive. So even though this goes all the way to the length of the word, this is going to give it to us one less uh, because the top of that range is exclusive. So we got to add a plus one here uh, to make things even. And so now when I put in same word, it goes all the way to a full sausage. So it starts at zero. So I'm printing from zero to zero here to start off, and that just gives me the S. Then I'm printing from zero to one. That gives me the SA, zero to two. SAU, 0 to 3, so on and so forth, until uh, my variable i is equal to this value, and then the loop exits, and I'm done printing. So, phew, that is it for loops for a minute. I know that was fast. Uh, you should have, let's chew on that for a while and do some labs. You should have enough to get the labs done at this point. Uh, we'll break this uh, lesson up into a few pieces, so I'll give you a couple more after this until we're super good at loops.